Hello, everyone. This is artist Kenneth Thor Sr. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host. And uh, today we have the uh, special uh, guest in the honor of having uh, Beverly Peace Kelly in. And um, we're going to dive into it in a little bit, but uh, I'm going to take a moment to uh, thank our listeners and everyone for your support. It's a, I'm in the early stages of building this uh, uh, podcast and we have the art with Kenneth um, demonstrations and then we have the artist interviews and um, art gallery tours and art history. So there's like kind of like four things we're doing here, which is cool. And um, so let me introduce Mrs. Beverly Keese Kelly. Uh, hold on, let me get here. I'm going to read her bio and I don't know. Oh, hey, thank God I got my glasses right here because I, oh my God, I'm trying to trying to read this little right now even blew it up too it's like large print but signs of aging <laughs> all right here we go beverly keys kelly is a trenton native multidisciplinarian artist beverly keys kelly began creating art as a youth under the tutorials of her mother sudi keys i hope i'm pronouncing it right she can correct me uh, when we when she gets on who taught her sewing art and decorating uh, she compiles her artwork from a sustainable point of view, using what's readily available, such as found, thrifted, and recycled items, all the, all the while using techniques and methods long known to African artisans. Beverly combines her talent for art and crafting with her passion for history and human experience to create an emotional connection to both the past and present existence of the African-American diaspora. Beverly enjoys sharing her love of art in her community by volunteering with nonprofits such as Dawn Hope <coughs> and Von Sella's Crown. She currently sits on the Trenton Museum Society's Board of Trustees as chair of the Education Committee and was recently voted chair of Ewing Arts Commission. Beverly also volunteers for the 1719 William Trent House and the Princeton University Museum of Art. Beverly is grateful to the Lord for all her talents, but most grateful for being a wife to an awesome husband and mother to four awesome adults who gifted her with four awesome grandchildren. Newly retired after 36 years with the state of New Jersey judiciary, she can now spend any free time left at her Ewing-based studio. What a wonderful bio, a wonderful person. I had the opportunity of meeting her husband. Actually, me and her husband used to play basketball all together. You know, Roscoe, he's, she's had an awesome husband. And uh, I've known him for like, you know, many years. And uh, they have a beautiful family. And actually, years ago, I painted their house. It is so funny. They have been so helpful to me uh, throughout my life. And uh, I'm going to let her know that I'm grateful for her before I even get her on here and her family in particular. Love you guys. And uh, without any further ado, Beverly Keys Kelly. Hey, How are Kenneth. you doing? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. We got awesome, a comment. Awesome. Here. We got Thank one you comment. For this, Thank you for this awesome opportunity. Listen, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I really do. And uh, like I said, I love your artwork, by the way. It's, it's, it's amazing. You. And you guys Thank will get you. to see what I'm talking Thank about. You. And the fact that you use the, you know, uh, a sustainable, uh, you're using recycled materials and yes. you're, you're just throwing your creativity into it. So uh, we don't want to hear about me much. We're going to get to talk to you, but we do have someone that just said good afternoon. Let's see here. Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> we got one good afternoon for you there. So I would like to show it's the like, comments. Uh, yes. <laughs> good afternoon. <All> right. <laughs> So listen, so let me uh, get on with my agenda here. And uh, we're going to start off with a quote that you said resonates with you. And uh, and then you can tell us, you know, why this particular quote resonates with you. And let me pull it up. Philippians, be ancients for nothing. Tell us what yes, you, tell us yes. why that resonates with you. Yes, be, because... Um you know, uh, you know, I know like you and I always have these 
these conversations, these deep um, Bible conversations and you know how I feel about the Lord. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, just trusting him and uh, allowing him to calm me when I'm excited or, or uh, worried about something. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I hang on to. Just taking time out to, to breathe and uh, trust God and trust God for the outcome and know that if it's something he's uh, in agreement with, that it's all going to wash out. It's all going to turn out fine. <laughs> and everybody asks me, you know, why are you so, always so happy? Why are you always smiling? Because he's got me. He's, he's got me in his hands. <laughs> Exactly. I love it. And a lot of us don't mm -hmm. think realize that it could be worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be worse, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, hold on my hair. I kind of looks here. I'm sorry, I, I had to pull my sheet up here. I almost dropped my coffee on my sheet here. I, I you know, this is my first coffee for the day. I'm not really, uh, I normally have my coffee a little earlier, so I'm trying to. I, I hear together. you. Uh, right. When I come into so, my studio, uh, sometimes there's uh, some activities going on in the other uh, parts uh, of the building, and I smell that coffee, and I'm going, gee, you know, <laughs> I just yes. have the teapot here, but I would yes. love some fresh brew once in a uh -huh. while <laughs> yeah. and i'm looking at your beautiful art behind you you know thank you, but, uh, thank yeah. you. so let me say what what initially inspired you to like pursue art and how was your role as a mother a grandmother and a wife influence yeah. like the creative process so right. you know, again it's like what initially inspired you to pursue art and how has like your family life influenced your creative process if it has Yes, um, like in my bio, I said, as a youth, my mother, and you did pronounce it right, Sudi uh, Keys, um, she was just a light. She was just um, one of those mothers that was easy to cling to, easy to hang off her every word and everything that she did just fascinated you, you know, fascinated me. You know, that's the experience I had with, with my mom and uh, she was a creator. You know, she just like I, like I was saying, she would take something out of nothing and just make something out of it. You know, we didn't have to run to the store for things. She would just look around the house and put something together and it would be gorgeous. It would be beautiful. And I think that just resonated with me. Maybe it was always natural for me to be creative, but I just followed everything that she did. And um, I feel like my creativity um, all the things that I love to do as an artist, uh, those were my first influences. Those were my first um, uh, ways. Uh, she allowed me to dig in the dirt. She allowed me to get dirty. She allowed me to have glue and paint and, you yes. know, uh, mess with her sewing material. She, she was uh, a seamstress. And wow. um, she didn't want my hands underneath the 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 sewing machine too early but once she felt like i could do it she put me right on that sewing machine and we would wow. go get fabric and we would make just about anything and everything mm -hmm. wow. yeah See, and so that's very amazing. young very young i started with the paint and the you know putting things together that is beautiful and this stuff goes to show you importance of like parenting and and having mm -hmm. your child involved with some things you do um it, it's so important and it, which brings me to, I always ask people, like, is there a particular artist? Uh, this is Women's History Month. So I was like asking everyone, like, what is a woman that has inspired you as an artist? And you said your mom and you see, I got right. it right up on the screen, you know, yeah, right. and it, that is, yeah. that's the best influence you could ever have. It, exactly. You know? When you talk about uh, women's history, um, a lot of times women in that, back in that day, Back in the day, uh, you know, born in maybe the 30s um, or earlier, um, you had a, you had to work in the field. You had to raise the kids. You had to work outside yeah. the home for other families. Um, you yeah. didn't have the opportunity for self-expression like we do today. So even yeah. though she was an artist, even though she was that person that could have been, um, uh -huh. I don't believe she was afforded the opportunities to yes. express herself and say to herself, I'm an artist. 
you know and so um yeah so so with that's a, a very deep historical part of being a black woman uh african american woman yes. is that you are you you're utilitarian you know mm. and yep. even though you have these things these things about you all these different facets about you uh you can't always express all of them um like you really want to bloom and come out and i'm i'm just grateful that in this day and time that uh i'm allowed to do that and and i think it's wonderful because it wasn't just it wasn't just women in the art world it was it was white women that weren't mm -hmm. in there it was black women and black men it was just basically mm -hmm. a white man's uh world as far as the art world and so right. at each one of those things right. like black men white women black women all started yeah. to be represented in there um cuz none of that was like represented you know basically at all and also we have a very similar thing my mother was was used to draw and i always reference to if people heard me say i think this is my mother coming out of me there ain't no reason why i should be doing this i was an athlete yeah. in high school and college yeah. so but my mother used to sit at the table and draw stuff really quick she was a, at that era my mother was a stay at home mom there were seven kids mm -hmm. and a dog yeah. and my mom like held everything down and my dad was out there working yeah. and it was like i yeah. came up in a super traditional household super mm -hmm. traditional you know, I we ate see. dinner together the whole nine exactly. yards. We got similar backgrounds. Exactly. It, 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 it ain't like it, it, it ain't like that today. Sorry, it's sad to say, but <laughs> it ain't like that. No, you know, unfortunately, you know that's mm -hmm. sliding away. And uh, yeah. you know, but anyway, I digress. I don't want to get on to another whole <laughs> crazy <laughs> subject. But let me get to my next question. Can you describe uh, your involvement with U.S. Arts Council and how it has impacted your artistic journey? And you also are involved with a couple of other organizations and groups, and you've networked with them. and uh, And how has that kind of like um, how has that helped you with your involvement with those groups and organizations? Well, I've I've uh, fortunately, and, and and I like to go all the way back. I'm, I'm a history person, so when I talk about myself, I I, I have to talk about. The, all those things that came into my life that 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 spurred me on. And back in high school, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, have a lot of uh, instructors who were um, networking. They they instilled that networking thing that there's no man's an island. You have to yes. you have to reach out and be uh, a part of this world. If you want to see a change, every everyone plays a, a part. So fast forwarding, um, I never had a problem with networking. I never had a problem with shaking hands and asking questions and smiling and meeting people. You were uh, at Mind Builders down the street from where I worked. Yes. Nope. <laughs> and I made nope. a point when, that, when, I, when we found out that you were down there. I made a point. I'm going down the street <laughs> and I'm going to meet uh -huh. this young man that sells uh -huh. these books, you know, out of, uh -huh. you know, you were selling them out of the back of your trunk at one time. I remember yes. seeing you on the corner. Did you, to, did you used to park in front of a me uh, and sell your books? No, no, with, I used to, I used, no, no, I used to park in front of that was um, uh, Roz, uh, I forget his name, but uh -huh. he, he was kind of after me. He started going around selling books, but I started selling books. It was the year uh -huh. before Doug Palmer came mayor, became okay. mayor. I started selling books and I used to sell them at the corner um, of where the Getty mm -hmm. gas station was across the street. Okay. Mrs. Willowford had a deli there. And she charged, she said, she told me $10 a day. I can set okay. up as many tables as I want. And there I put my signs out there and it was African American yeah. literature. And yeah. everyone was coming by there. And so it just grew. I had one table of books, then I had two tables, then I had three tables, and I was exactly. selling. And then people started looking for me. And next thing I know, yes, I opened up yes. that bookstore. <laughs> yes, it was crazy. So that, I had it for like nine yes. years. Absolutely. That's yes. the type of person I am. I'm, I'm, I go out into the community and I seek things out. So yes. um, I would go to these uh, different events that, you know, art events that they had around town and I would meet people. Yeah. And um, basically, that's how you get to to your day today is, yes. you know, I, I have all these places where, that I volunteer for today 
but I wouldn't be there without those things that happened before that. You know, Facts. I volunteer over, um, I'm on the trustees over at uh, the Trenton, uh, Trenton House uh, Museum Society, the Ellerslie uh -huh. Museum, and awesome. uh, the Ewing Arts Community. I'm there. Wow. And all these afford you the opportunity to for more information on how Facts. to enter shows and be in shows. Absolutely. And uh, get your art exposed in, you know, certain places because you're Actually, meeting and engaging with all these different uh, other artists and people of, you know, that in the art community. I saw that you were um, with also the Princeton Museum uh, yes. there as well. Mm -hmm. And that new museum, when is it? Is it scheduled to open soon or is it like the Princeton uh, Museum? It looks like it's I, be a I believe it is scheduled for. Uh, Either later this year or uh, 2025, I guess. You know, every time you give, you put, you can put out a date. But if there's delays, you know, there's delays. Yeah. But right, right it's now, I believe they they are scheduled to open. Uh, you know, either later this year, or early next year. I can't but they, wait. They they uh, they take up space in some of the other art venues in Trenton. I mean, not in yeah. Trenton. I'm sorry, in Princeton. In Princeton, uh -huh. so uh, there's galleries that host them while they're uh, closed, host their artists while they're yeah. closed. So a uh, woman by the name of Sharice uh, Porter, uh -huh. uh, she has a mentoring group called Dawn of Hope. And oh, okay. um, I used to volunteer for her after school programs. So when okay. she got involved with the uh, youth program at the uh, university, uh, they gave me a call. So that's networking. Wow. That's networking. Yep. That, that's you know, getting out there and, uh, you know, making yourself available. <laughs> and it's residual. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, so going along with that as well, like, how do you, like, balance your responsibilities? Like, you're, you're obviously retired at this point, but how do you balance your responsibilities mm -hmm as a mother and like i said as a grandmother and having a studio outside of the house it's one thing to be having a studio in-house but your studio is outside of the house so Absolutely. uh yes. and it's not yes. like around the corner you got to get your car to go there <laughs> yes. so how, do, how do you fit that all into everything i know they're all pulling at you and tugging at you from every angle like how do you yes. navigate around that <laughs> but blessings uh kenneth <laughs> blessings on blessings on blessings. I, I've always been blessed to have a supportive family, a supportive husband. Beautiful. You know, my, my husband likes things neat. <laughs> That's, listen, I'm telling you, I know your husband. And when you're your collecting, <laughs> yeah, when you're listen, collecting I, treasures, <laughs> uh huh. Uh, can't I be know neat. your husband. He's a, he, your husband is like he's a shark. God, I know him. He's a sharp guy, and uh, so I've been knowing Ross all the thing. He's about he about business. He's sharp. Yes. He ain't no. I mean, but at the same time, he's super kind. He's like yes, super kind. kind. He's like this. This is what I see. Your husband. He's firm. <laughs> But kind, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yes, he's like, yes. he's like I, 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 I handle you if I got to, and I'll do it in a nice way. <laughs> in oh saying that, in saying that, uh, since uh, we've been together, he's always uh, been supportive of me uh -huh. having a studio outside of the home so that I could house all the things <laughs> yes, <laughs> that I yes. need to to express to express my, and do this and um just respected who I am and respected, you know, what I do and was, you know, go, 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 B, 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 you know? And if yes. you don't have that, I think you just, you know, you're bound, you really can't. Um, but he let, yep. he allows me to have my wings. <laughs> Let's, and my and children, listen, let me tell you right, they sorry. were always little suitcases. I would pack them up, I would pack my stuff up. And when they were small, they was with me out at the, yes. the you know vending and out on the street and vending out at uh -huh. the you know I uh, shows and things like that yeah but when they I got remember. older they were able to you know stay at home and take care of themselves while I did all that <laughs> awesome so, so we're going to talk a little bit about your artwork now like can you share like some insight into like uh, your process of like creating your one of a kind pieces like 
Like, how do you approach it? Do you have a unique approach or is it just that you're doing it? Because you do create one of a kind pieces. Thank and we're going to start looking you. at some of your artwork. Thank you. I, uh, I love history and I love telling history, visual history, you know, through, you know, visualization. I, um, if I have a, I'm reading history books a lot. Um, I, my parents would tell me stories about, you know, they're growing up and, and their experiences back down South Carolina. They were from South Carolina. They, um, they had some very unique experiences and we could see movies on TV. We could read books. Ask your parents what happened to them when they were growing up down South. You exactly. know, they can tell, they can vouch for all those things that we see and read in those books and uh, yeah. you know, see on TV. They lived it, you know, they yep. lived it. So all of that feeds into me um, as I create my pieces. A lot of times I'll, I'll use some vibrance. You know, yellow is my favorite color to start mm. with. Um, okay. I'll start there. But then there's those times when I want to express, uh, you know, more uh uh sober uh issues of of the upbringing of my parents and people like my parents that had the experiences similar to my parents yeah so i will uh i use a lot of fabric i love fabric i use uh uh cotton was one of the things that my parents touched i don't know where that cotton went who it got sold to and what yeah. i'm wearing that that cotton may be in, you know? Yes. So when you think about cotton and, and it was used to uh, make fabrics, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of the artwork, I, it has a lot of fabric in it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've noticed mm -hmm. that. So um, I'm gonna show your picture, but I'm gonna ask you one more question. Like your work, it involves both, like you said, painting and crafting. Like do you decide, how do you decide which medium uh, to use for like a particular piece? and find that style of vibes across different mediums. Like, I, how, I, how does that, how does that work? I start with right. the paint. I mm -hmm. start with the paint. I'll take a canvas and I'll I'll paint that canvas and I'll let that canvas speak to, you know that painted can to me as to what how many layers I'm going to apply. It may be paper first, it may be uh it may be uh fabric first that'll go on top of it but there's mm -hmm. there's a layering process that I'll do um I I love found objects um if I'm walking if I'm you know thrifting um these are things that I I might pick up little things to to put in my artwork you know little just mm -hmm. you know things that you know um I get from friends or family. They know that I do this type of work. They they kind of send me a box of things <laughs> or a bag of exactly. things to you know enter into my my artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's one of your pieces right here, and um, tell me a little bit about that. You kind of buffered out a little bit on me. I'm gonna make sure I yeah, still can this, see you here. This piece this piece is telling a story of when I was a youth. Uh, my sister was a camp counselor <laughs> and uh okay. i was i was at the camp uh she's a little older than me a lot older than me um but she was a mm -hmm. camp camp counselor and she took me along to you know go to this camp and at the end uh -huh. of the camp we had to do a performance and of course uh -huh. i got cold feet <laughs> 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 i knew my routine i knew everything but as a kid uh -huh. sometimes you, you get nervous you get stage uh -huh. fright so that that's the name of the piece, Stage Fright. And this is oh, okay. a uh, this is a <laughs> um, a moment where I was sitting on the side of the stage, uh, <laughs> not wanting wow. to perform in front of all those people. They didn't tell me it was gonna be all those people there <laughs> when uh -huh. we had to do our dance. <laughs> wow, wow. Stage fright. That is stage funny. Fright. And, and I see here, where, where were you at here? And, and what? tell me a little bit about this piece. Where were you? This is my first uh, time being accepted for a show at the Ellerslie Museum, the Trenton Museum Society. Awesome. Um, very awesome. proud moment where I was able to uh, express some new things that I was experimenting with, which was photography. 
Uh, so that is a collage. Uh, that is a paper collage from a, uh, that's a, the woman wow. in the features in there was uh, cut from a magazine and wow. the uh, flowers around her were cut from some other uh, found, you know, papers, collected papers that I had and uh, awesome. put them together, took a photograph of them and then wow. altered the photograph. So those oh. were, you know, some visual uh, photography that I was uh, mm -hmm. playing with. And uh, was very proud of those two pieces. They were, they were accepted for that show. It was called Next, and wow. uh, they wanted us to express some what's next in art. And uh, wow. I think the next thing that we're going to be experimenting with, uh, maybe you you have or not, is the uh, Afrofuturism. I'm, uh -huh. I'm ready to dig my hands into that Afrofuturism. Wow. That ready for awesome. that. Wow. <laughs> yes, that's, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Yes. So tell me a little bit about this piece here. Uh, this is also a pe the, the second piece that was accepted for that same show. Oh, and exactly uh, again, so again, that is a paper collage. If you look at the background of that pa that uh, picture, um, uh -huh. that is a there was it, it was a packaging for tape. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that is the uh, other papers and that I cut out. And another photograph that I took and altered, and all that's done on my cell phone. Wow! Wow, that is awesome. Thank right, you. Just... <laughs> uh, Possibilities a... are in art are endless. You just have to use your imagination. <laughs> Got a comment there for you. Thank you, Najee. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You could play with that technique that is, all day. You could really play with that technique all day. It's, it's, it's really fun to do. <laughs> Here's another one of your pieces here. Yes, and this is this is one of the pieces um, that would be a part of like a, a historical collection that I do. I do a lot of historical pieces, uh, found object pieces, assemblage uh, pieces where um, I, I just, you know, layer, layer, layer. Uh, different uh, things that I've uh, come across. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you see the burlap there. It's on a. It's attached to a piece of wood. Um, that what's laying on top of the burlap is is a discarded box. Uh, uh -huh. What's on top of the discarded box is a just a piece of metal that I found out in the street. And um, on top of that is. Uh, I go thrifting a lot, so I would have found this bracelet and with the cameo yes. on it. Yes. And um, thank you, Mary. <laughs> yes. And, Mary's uh, another great artist that we're going to have one here uh, eventually as well. Oh, awesome, Mary. I'll look you up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yes. just, you know, making them visually interesting and compiling them uh, mm -hmm. and giving you a... Uh, a look at you know i like that rough i like that sometimes i like to make it you know i like a, to make a lot of rough pieces yeah all right i'm gonna look at one more before we take our commercial break and tell me about this one uh that is a commission a young lady that lives here in the uh, city of trenton uh wanted black art for all of the walls in her home and she asked me to do something for her uh, bedroom. And she uh -huh. actually gave me that Afrocentric uh, fabric that you see in that uh, wow, piece beautiful. to do something with. Uh, so she told me that that fabric was going to be, uh, was going to re uh, she was going to use it, the bolt that she, was, she had, she was going to use it to reupholster a chase. Uh-huh. So uh, she said, you have creative freedom. Uh, go back, you know, and and bring me something back. I like I like orange. <laughs> so wow. those were the two things That's I was beautiful. equipped with the piece of that fabric and the color uh, orange as the idea. And um, I said, OK, I'm going to make her sitting on her chase. <laughs> and she wow. didn't know that. So when she awesome. got it, she was just overwhelmed that I wow. literally uh, came back with her sitting on her the chase. <laughs> wow. It is. It's beautiful. It, it Thank really you. Is. 
So listen, what we're going to do, we're going to take a little commercial break here and um, mm-hmm. we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> All righty. While we proudly showcase the original artwork of artist Kenneth J. Lewis Sr., we also offer an array of other products to complement your artistic interests. From charming coffee mugs and elegant note cards to stunning prints and captivating published books, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Be sure to explore our diverse selection. As a token of appreciation, we're delighted to offer you a special discount. Simply click the link in the description and use promo code KJL10 at checkout to receive a generous 10% off your order. Plus, enjoy free shipping on orders totaling $50 or more. It's our way of saying thank you for supporting our passion for artistry. Start browsing now and enhance your collection with our unique offerings. We can't wait to see what catches your eye. Hashtag grateful, hashtag much love. Awesome. Awesome. So we're back here with my little shameless advertisement. <laughs> I, love anyway. it. I love how you I love how you've uh, merchandised your business. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, presentation. And uh, we, we have uh, a great example in front of us as artists to, um, you know, show us what we need to be doing to get ourselves out there. Yes, I appreciate it, and I'm grateful, but like I said, you're an inspiration to me as well. It's like I see so many people around me, and I'm inspired by you as you know as well, so it's it's reciprocal <laughs> so Thank you. I want to say um so uh what we do here is this women's history month, so we're just gonna segue and we're gonna come back into I got some more questions for you, but we're gonna go right now to. Uh, the women's artist that we have for this month is now my computer wants to act a little slow on me right now. Now, how you gonna do that? Okay, and I always have trouble pronouncing her name, but it's Breath Moroso, one of my favorite artists. You can see her work yes. at the Barron's Foundation, and like to see these pictures. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you some pictures of her work, but to actually see it in person, it's yes. breathtaking. The brush mm-hmm, stroke, mm-hmm. softness, and the, and the way that the, the paint is applied, it is it is absolutely amazing. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, I'm going to put her picture up here to see who I'm talking about. And uh, I love her artwork, and I'm going to show you her artwork as well. And then we're going to come back to her. So here's a photo of her right here. And I'll tell you just a short little thing. Uh, she was born in 1841. She died in 1894. She uh, stands as an icon of artistic innovation, pioneering her way into the male-dominated sphere of the 19th century art as the first female artist to integrate into the inner circles of the Impressionist luminaries such as Edgar Degas, Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir. Morissette defines social society norms defied societal norms and reshaped the artistic landscape. Her bold brushstroke and keen eye for domestic scenes and garden settings distinguished her, um, distinguished her, ca- um, capturing the ephem- ephemeral beauty of her everyday life with unparalleled grace. Morisot's artistic vision transcended conventional boundaries as she masterfully uh, wielded her brush to immortalize moments of intimacy and tranquility. Her paintings pulsate with life, each stroke embedded with a sense of spontaneity and, vi- uh, spontaneity and vitality. I'm sorry, I'm t- trying to read this in splash to <laughs> move it along. Yeah. Through her distinct style characterized by loose, rapid brush strokes, Morisot offered viewers a glimpse into the subtle nuances of human emotion and their actions, inviting them to explore the intricacies of the mundane like fresh eyes. Her commitment to portraying ordinary and extra- extraordinary depth and sensitivity cemented her legacy as a trailblazer in the annals of art history, inspiring generations of female artists to come. And that's the bio of her. And like I told you, like, you know, her work has such a softness. This is another picture of her here. Mm. That's and awesome. And here we have, look at her artwork. I'm telling you, I'm that telling you, awesome. it looks like something, but you've got to see like one of the <laughs> Yes, it looks yes. like a Rembrandt, but that's wonderful. That yes. is awesome. And, we, and and like you see these, 
the softness of these these images. Yes, uh, this is and my this, favorite. I love that one. Me too. This is one of my favorite. I heard too. Favorite. I thought I had a, I thought I had a yeah. close up of this one because there, when you see this one, like really, really close up. I don't think I have a close up one here, but I had one really, really close up one here of her work. Uh, and then this is another one right here. I think yeah. that was. I don't know if that was uh, Monet or Edgar Degas. She was painting or something there, but. Uh, but that's enough of her, and we're getting back to our guests. So we have our women artists of the week. And that's awesome. So now, uh, you know, here's my next question. So what inspires your choice of subjects? And you kind of went into that. That was one of my questions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and are there reoccurring themes? Like, do you reoccur with some themes or motifs that hold personal significance to you? Like, is there anything like personally? You did. Yes, yes. I um I do uh you know, like I said, the historical uh pieces in and, and we're making history every day. So even the even when I go into uh making something, I'm often thinking about something that I've either experienced or seen uh or or someone else uh someone else's experience or my own personal experience. I have a whole series. Um, it When I was growing up, um, there was a lot of women in my family. It's my mother and uh, me and my three sisters. There were four girls. So that was the happy time uh, in my life. And I tend to uh, create a lot of women. You know, the sister circle is big for me because that's that was my growing up. So... Um, as a creator, I tend to lean more towards the the female. And um, I said to myself one day, um, you don't you haven't created a lot of males. You know, you haven't created hardly any males. A lot of times if I create a male, it, it is telling a story of maybe uh, someone who was enslaved uh, from the past. But uh, what about the males, you know, from your current um, mm -hmm. uh, life? And so one day I sat down and I began, you know, creating uh, males, you know, uh, okay. figures. And I, I might I might have one I can show. Yeah, pull it up. So, and as a matter of fact, if you can, I, I was going to ask you if you can pull a couple off the wall or anything okay. to bring here so we can see some of it in Absolutely. real time. That was one of the things I was going to ask you. But go ahead. Absolutely. So, go ahead. I, mm -hmm. Absolutely. This, uh, I've got to get him in again. So this is, this is one. Where that there's a beautiful. there's a man, he's uh this this was all done in uh, marker. I received the package of markers from my friend. She had wow. brought them for her. She brought them for from for her daughter, and yes. um, and she said my daughter she 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 used them for a few minutes, but they've been just sitting here, <laughs> yes. and I want you to have them, you know. So that's wow. uh, and I hate to move the thing. That is so beautiful. So listen, show us a couple and of then, things. Bring a couple of things over from the studio by the camera. Absolutely. Let's see. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing to see them with these pictures I'm putting up here, but kind of like you grab a couple of things absolutely. and bring it up to the camera. This is this is there's a whole series of these gentlemen here. Wow. I have a whole I'll, so they were they were a series. Um, okay. And you were the, you were the one who told me to, to create in series. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I took yes. that advice. I took that advice, and um, when uh -huh. I make when I make one, I make I make several. Uh huh. And he's done. He has fabric, and all this around him is that marker. But his hat, wow. his hat, and is is a fabric collage. And I'm that also. I'm also a silhouette artist, so a lot of my work because I want to, I want to uh, uh, convey that um, many of us have the same experience. So uh -huh. if I if I if I uh, if I create this little girl, oh, I love that. thank you. If I create this little girl and yes. uh, she's jumping rope. It, it she's not the only little girl that ever dropped rope <laughs> there's that, hundreds there's yes. hundreds you know so 
this piece of fabric was uh back in the day when i used to go to the thrift store with my mother <laughs> so wow. I still, i'm a, i i still, still had it so i put it in, still, in that's that. real personal thank yes. you thank you mm -hmm. so um yeah so a lot of times i'll, I'll go there and i'm a silhouette artist so i'll cut out a silhouette of a person yeah. and she she uh this is a harriet tubman uh-huh try to get it on the right wow. angle here we go here we go <laughs> there we are so These harriet are tubman, thank you harriet tubman has a lot of uh she has a lot of uh she has she's telling that story about when the um when the uh, slave master uh, blinded her by hitting her over the head. Yes. Um, wow. You know, she has that, that staff over here. Uh -huh. I believe that, that uh, you know, when she was bringing, oh, there it is on this side. Everything's opposite on the, on the camera. <laughs> we have this I staff. know, but you look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, so these when, are great. When I, when I do these assemblages, they're, they're telling a story. They're telling a story. They're sharing a story. And and that is like when you're combining the history and the mm -hmm. creativity, it's awesome. Look at this one. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And they're all they're all 3D. And there's a lot of times when I take a picture of them, um, all, you, all this will fuse when I take a picture of it. Wow. That is this, awesome. This is, I just this is, love it. Look at everything you have in there. This is, this is a photograph of a doll that I made. Mm -hmm. And I used it in that that piece. See, this is not fair. Now you got me wanting to just go and paint right now. I, I mean, it's yeah, like, see, absolutely. this is what happens. Absolutely. Like, we inspire when each I other. Touch, like, this, all I want to do is go, yes. like, create. I know that's what I'm going to yes. do, you know? <laughs> when I leave your studio, that um, that's what I'm, where my mind is like, oh, my gosh. I said... I have a, I have a, a wood piece that I haven't used. I have this board that I found on the street. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm ready to go I'm use it. You, it's contagious. It's freaking contagious. You know, but let me see that one there. Let me see this I one. Have a, I have a, uh, put, that a, a little closer to the, put that a little closer to the camera. I want to see that. Marina. I'm, I'm like, trying to get it. I'm, I'm trying to get it in the light and, put knock, it. and not knock it over. <laughs> oh, my, yeah. <laughs> This is called Marching On. And again, that's that pack of uh, markers that my girlfriend gave me. This is uh -huh. called Marching On. And um, I do a whole series like what you're doing for Women's History Month. I have a Women's <laughs> History uh, series as well. So that's, that's part of my Women's History. Uh, um, yeah. Wow, over, nostalgic. Over, yeah, you're you're right get, about that. It is nostalgic. <laughs> thank you. When I get... Another comment. Uh, you have another yeah, comment. When get, yeah, when I get a vent, oh, you have a comment. Oh, thank no, you. So you have a comment. You want here? We interviewing with you. They direct <laughs> this to you. <laughs> when I um, when I get a a venue, uh, right now the venue uh -huh. that I was going to use was having some issues. We couldn't be at Ellerslie for the Women's History Project. Oh, okay. But the, pro the project uh, is a collage, <laughs> and uh, each each woman would get a poster board cut out like a woman's figure. I oh, gotcha. They would get mm -hmm. a bit, and, and then I would give them papers to uh, collage their board. Gotcha. So each wow. woman would collage, and they could make it whatever it is they want to make it. And I try to bring mm -hmm. all types of different uh, adornments and things for uh, them to make their boards out of. Um, these are just samples, you know, ones that I've made to bring to, to show. Um, uh huh. You know, a lot of a lot of cutouts and papers and things. But we talk about women's history. We talk about the suffragette, uh, suffragettes of the past. And, um, you know, I bring a lot of uh, samples of my artwork that I've done. Oh, um, I really like that one right there. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Look at the colors in there. And uh, I mean, this is. I, I love. I love the yellow. Mm -hmm. I love. I love giving paying homage to women of the yes. past. You mm -hmm. know, their past. Uh, 
experiences. Um, I'm a silhouette artist, so I'll I'll cut I'll cut this freehand. Wow. This I'm gonna show you this one right here. See this? Look what you have on the screen here. What is okay. this right here? Like, I'm Thank right you. Let me tell you right what I I love mm. thrifting. <laughs> I love mm. thrifting. So I got this at the uh secondhand store. Well, that's it right it, there. Ah. It was a clock. It was a clock. Okay. And I just love the uh beauty of the and I wanted to make sculptures. You know, this is me. I have so many items that I am uh, collecting to make sculptures. Exactly. And I love to make So in the face, we have fabric. Mm -hmm. And then we just have we just have other found objects attached to it. So creative and so it, it really, you know, says a lot about, you know, how you're willing to uh, take on all different avenues, techniques, and be innovative. And look at this piece you have right here. Uh, let me see this piece here. I'm going to show a few of the ones you sent me. So you have this one right here. Yeah. Thank Tell you. Tell me about this one here. Yes, that that piece, again, uh, That's is this. Made from, okay. it's, made mm -hmm. from a, it's made from a thrifted item. Mm -hmm. And um, it's adhered to a canvas. Uh-huh. And um, just, just because when I was growing up, um, a lot of times you go into, you know, you go to your friends and family's home and there was no Afrocentric, there was no artwork that, that said that black people live there, exactly. <laughs> that African-Americans live there. And that was one of my goals to, because I found that the reason a lot of people only had maybe photographs of their family up, which is fine, but they had very little Afrocentric art was because they couldn't afford it you couldn't mm -hmm. afford to go to the to because it was so expensive because it as if you were if you were able to be an african-american artist you were trying uh, to pay your rent you were, exactly. we're, still trying, we're still trying to we're still trying to pay our rent <laughs> but you know back I in the day you were, <laughs> yes yes but back in the day it was very difficult for the average family to own a, a piece of black art original uh -huh. black it was exactly. maybe a copy. It was maybe a copy. Yeah. It was a, you know, thin frame Remember or whatever. Remember, I own mind builders. Remember, I own mind builders, and yes, I sold yes. prints from all different artists exactly. all over. I didn't sell exactly. originals. Then they had ethnic right. expressions and all that stuff. Absolutely. Whereas now we're Absolutely. seeing people that want to buy originals. No. Absolutely. So, so my thing was, I'm going to make original art, and I'm going to, I'm going to make it you know i'm going to bring it to market at a cost where the people in my neighborhood can afford it exactly so i'm going to go to the thrift store i'm going to go to the you know the clearance rack i'm going to go to the uh you know i'm going to find things that uh you know to the flea market so that when i make it i'm going i know i'm going to bring it beautiful but i know uh -huh. that when i bring it to you you're going to be able to bring it home and put it on your exactly. wall and represent us, you know, in your mm -hmm. home because that's the babies need to see that. Uh -huh. So sometimes uh -huh. all that other stuff has to go away. We have to mm -hmm. put all that other stuff away and bring some black art home to our babies. You mm -hmm. know, so I, that was one of my goals that that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make sure everybody's able to, you know, afford a piece of black art for their house. You know, it's a, that was important so, to me. Now you have another, you have another, uh, comment on here uh-huh uh what's it yeah, say? you have well, another comment yeah uh to response to create as an amazing way to respond to create. oh thank you crystal <laughs> thank you for watching that's my yes. baby <laughs> that's my yes, baby that's my oldest and oh, she okay. has, she has influenced a lot of uh the the youth pieces that you see <laughs> uh -huh. okay so so let yeah. me go on to i have another question for you mm -hmm. um as an as an artist like um as you, uh someone that produces prints and original pieces um how do you maintain the integrity of your work do you are there some things you just make exclusive as originals um and you won't make prints of them or will you make prints of everything and do you think it messes up the um how can I say the integrity? I guess you want to say it'll work if you make a print of one of your originals. 
Yeah. Again, Kenneth, um, I've been in this for so long that I think I've really, I've really focused in on my goal of making sure that the the people in my neighborhood, that's in my target audience, are able to mm -hmm. take black home, uh, black art home, and put it on their walls. Exactly. So, so if that's me uh, making a print for them of some original artwork, I, I will, I will do that. Uh, there are pieces that don't, you know, they don't photograph well because of the, uh, uh, because of maybe some elements that they they have, and they that. do not photograph well. So mm -hmm. they can't really be uh, printed uh, the way that would make them look good. So gotcha. that's the only ones that are off, you know, that I wouldn't print out, uh, make mm -hmm. a print out of. And, you know, just keeping focused on my goal and keeping focused on what my uh, my plan was for my art. And I think that at the end of the day, that's what makes me happy. And that that's... Um, that's what's satisfying me as an artist is to make sure that uh, my work is accessible to the folks that I, I created the artwork for in the first place. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, what do you hope that when someone buys a piece of your artwork and what do you hope is the experience for them? Uh, like, what do you want people to think of when they what do you want them to take away from your art? Whether they are buying it from you, whether they see it on a wall in an uh, exhibition, a gallery, or whatever. Like, what do you want them to take away from it? Uh, I want them to be able to not get tired of seeing that piece. If, if that piece is uh, sitting on a wall when they come downstairs in the living room, I want them to always have that wow moment. I want them to always have a moment where when someone comes into their home and they see that piece and there is someone sit, looks over and go, Oh, this is, this is so nice. Where, where did you, where, you know, tell me about that. Tell me how you acquired it. Tell me, you know, give me some more dialogue about that. And I hope that they'll always uh, have that piece um, as a conversation piece uh, and pass it down. It could be, you know, a lot of times artwork was a family heirloom. You know, uh -huh. you think about yes. how we see pieces in museums that have lasted thousands of, you know, hundreds of years. Exactly. Um, I want my piece to be one of those pieces that is around for hundreds of years because someone thought enough of it to preserve it that long. Mm -hmm. but, um, so let me, uh, before we like wrap things up, you know, my last question I normally ask everyone, and then I'm going to give you our artist quote of the day, our famous artist quote. Uh, they don't even have to be famous. This is an artist quote. But um, what is advice would you give to like up and coming young artists? Um, what what advice can you give to them? Uh, focus in on why you begin or that you want to be an artist. Why, why do you want to be an artist? What was it that, uh, you know, struck your heart when you started making art and stay there because the journey is very, it's a rocky road. And uh, being an artist sometimes, even though you have your art community and you have your friends and the people lifting you up, you're still feeling like you're the only one when you're in your room doing that art. So if you stay focused on why you you are an artist or why you feel you're an artist or why you want it to be an artist, I believe that will carry you through those times when you've taken that same piece to market over and over and over again and then no one gets it. And then it's that right. one time <laughs> that you take right. it to market and then <laughs> someone is willing to give you whatever you ask for it and to right. take it home. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Every Beautiful. piece you make is for somebody. You just have to. You have it. Sometimes you just haven't found that somebody yet. <laughs> Got to match them up, <laughs> and then and, and in order in doing that, you just have trust. You have to yes. trust and just know that you line up with that person. Yes. Yep. And be anxious for nothing. Like <laughs> be yeah. anxious for be nothing. anxious for nothing, like you said. <laughs> 
So listen, we're going to have our, um, you stay right here, our, our highlighted artist quote of the day comes from Georgia O'Keefe. And that's a picture of Georgia O'Keefe. And let me put her comment up here really quickly. This is our, uh, here. Okay, let's show her quote. And it says, I got to put my glasses on. I here. It says, sometimes I start in a very realistic fashion. And as I go from one painting to another of the same kind, it becomes simplified until it can be nothing but abstraction. Georgia Oki. And that's, again, another person and another artist just allowing themselves to be free and to, like, say, listen, I, uh, I'm not going to, like, I don't care what the outcome is. I'm just going to keep moving along and whatever happens, happens. And uh, it'll start here, it'll start there, but it'll end where it's going to end. And yeah. that's so beautiful. And just Absolutely. thank you so much. And I have another comment for you here. Uh, okay. And this is a young artist here uh, that was on here before. What's our comment here? Let's get it on here. Ab Absolutely. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. And thanks again for tuning in. Remember, everyone, that like, you got to like, share, and definitely subscribe to the channel. So listen, Beverly, we're coming to the end. I'm going to do a little housekeeping. Don't anyone go away. But I just want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been such an honor to have you on here. And thank uh, you for I'm really you. grateful. I am so grateful. grateful you can. Thank you. Grateful for you too, Ken. All right. We're going to say bye. And uh, everyone, if you got anything else you want to say to the artist before we check out, put it really quickly in the comments. Um, if not, you know, Beverly, just enjoy the rest of your day and tell your family I said hi. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay, everyone, we got a little, what a wonderful interview. I'm telling you, this was a really, really good interview. And uh, she is such an uh, awesome and creative artist. And again, like I said, it was such an honor to have her on here. And, um, but next week, um, this keeps moving fast, folks. We're moving along with uh, what we're doing here. So let me put up here. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to have on the show uh, Rebecca Eve Swan. And she, just wait till she comes on. She's also an awesome artist as well. And you have to see some of the work that she does. I'm so excited to have her on uh, next week. So you all make sure you tune in um, for that um episode and then let me see here uh remember that uh if you want to log into my website uh for one thing let me put up the website because i i offer workshops at kjl art sanctuary um and so you want to go on to my uh, my website is kjlartsanctuary.com and just hook, uh, click on to the workshop section uh where you can sign up for a workshop i do the workshops uh in-house but I also am available for work virtual as well and also doing the workshops for your school or your organization as well. You would have to call me for details about that. Um, and uh, then here again, we have on YouTube, this will be rebroadcast on my YouTube channel, uh, Artist Kenneth J. Lewis Senior Channels, where you can see Art with Kenneth on um, KJL uh, podcast. Uh, so we have the three things, the art, uh, history, uh, gallery tours, uh, artist interviews, and uh, demonstrations is actually four things. Um, that and four sections. So make sure you go on there and like and subscribe and help me. I'm trying to get up uh, my subscribers um, and grow my uh, YouTube audience, and I would be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, as well, if you'd like to contribute, scrolling across the bottom is our Cash App. If you'd like to contribute to our podcast and help us continue with these uh, weekly uh, artist interviews as well as weekly art demonstrations. Um, so let's go from here. So we got our next person here. And uh, this is one of the classes we offer, which is gel press printing. And you can make all types of creative items uh, doing the gel press uh, printing. Um, let me go down to the bottom here. So again, uh, make sure if you want to, I'm going to put my website up here again and please uh, go on the website. Yeah. 
They got some music playing in here where I am. <laughs> and there we go there. And uh, let me see if there's one more thing I have on the agenda here. Okay. Take that off here. And again, so everyone, I just want to thank you for tuning in today. And like I said, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any episode. And so until next time, keep creating. And just like I said, keep, keep, keep creating and appreciating art. And I am so grateful you're here and much love.